KillingTheBuddha.com, religion for the rest of us. Jeff Charlotte is with us. He is the author of The Family, The Secret Fundamentalism at the Heart of American Power. And, uh, Jeff, welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show, actually. Hey, Tom. Thanks for having me back. You were, you were here when your book first came out in hardcover, as I recall, and it is now out in paperback, the New York Times bestseller, The Family. This is, and, and, I'm, and I'm curious about KillingTheBuddha.com. I want to get to that in just a minute because I've spent some time on the site and I find it fascinating. 99% um, fatwa-free religion. But uh, in this book, you are essentially laying out the, the not just the hypothesis, but the, you know, going inside the structure of a Christian secret society whose members include people like Mark Sanford, who may well have been our next president of the United States had he not uh, ended up with a little sweetie down in Argentina. And, uh, and I mean, this is truly spooky. Uh, first of all, am I correctly uh, uh, characterizing your book? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And not just Mark Sanford, but also John Ensign, senator from Nevada, who was also uh, looked like he's going to be running for president. And, you know, what was remarkable was that in the public confessions of adultery by both these men, uh, this secretive organization, uh, known variously as the family or the fellowship or the prayer breakfast folks, uh, emerged as a central, uh, a central player in, uh, in both of their uh, public confessions. Now, there are Democrats who are members of this as well. There are indeed. Uh, I mean, this is, you know, one of the things, I, the argument I try and make in the book is that uh, we've really misunderstood the Christian right. If we look at just the James Dobsons and the Pat Robertsons of the world, we're missing the boat. This organization's been around longer than any of them, 70 years, uh, rated by uh, academic uh, scholars to look at it, the most influential uh, religious conservative group in Washington. And it's done that not by lining up just with the Republican Party, but making sure that it has uh, representation on both sides of the aisle. So, for instance, Senator Mark Pryor, conservative Democrat, uh, conservative anti-labor Democrat from Arkansas, uh, who explained to me that through the family he had learned that the separation of church and state was uh, kind of exaggerated. Uh, Senator Bill Nelson, a conservative Democrat from Florida, has also been involved for a long time. Whoa. So, does this, the family, does this qualify as a secret society? Well, I, I leave that up to you to decide. Uh, the leader, Doug Coe, uh, was described in Time magazine when they listed uh, the 25 most uh, powerful evangelicals. They called Doug Coe, the leader of the family, the stealth persuader. Doug Coe, uh, in explaining uh, the uh, philosophy of his organization, says, the more invisible you can make your organization, the more influence it will have. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year when we... Uh, uh, teamed up with NBC News to do a little investigative uh, a, a piece on the show, and NBC News called up the organization, said, we'd like to talk to you about it. The leader, one of the leaders of the group, said, oh, well, there's been a mistake. There is no organization to which we're able to reply. Uh, then uh, what explains uh, these millions of uh, dollars flowing through your various 501c3 uh, tax returns? Right. And they said... Uh, they said, move along, nothing to see here. I mean, <laughs> no droids in this car. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> it, it, it's a fairly effective strategy, i got to admit. And then, you know, then every now and then you get someone like uh, Mark Sanford, who is really going off the rails, and he says, well, um, uh, uh, you know, I was helped in my spiritual uh, life by this group uh, on right. C Street, this house that they now, make kind of well, for Congress. Jeff, we're talking with Jeff Charlotte, and his his book uh, now out in paperback, The Family, The Secret Fundamentalism at the Heart of American Power. There are folks who argue that AA, for example, is a cult, although AA is highly decentralized. Uh, you know, there there is a... Um, uh, you know, on the one hand, a, a, a strong bond uh, along, among many of its members. Uh, some of them, I think, elevate it to the level of almost a religion. And yet, AA doesn't seem to be trying to influence. The, it's, a, it's a lousy analogy, actually. They don't, they don't seem to be trying to influence power. Is it possible, though, that that this is just an organization like AA that is a support group, basically, for these folks? Well, I, I would say yes. If I hadn't spent uh, five years interviewing members and uh, researching 600 boxes of documents and uh, and the family's archives at the Billy Graham Center, uh, where I, you know I'll, I'll give it the clearest example is this. This is uh, from Somalia, you know, which has been in the news lately. It's a sort of one of the next havens, perhaps, of Al Qaeda, Islamic right. uh, radical terrorism. How did Somalia get destroyed? We have to go back to the 1980s 
when the dictator of Somalia went to Doug Coe, the leader of the family, and, and one of the just bare-knuckle kind of letters that you'll find in those archives says, he, he was a Muslim, by the way, uh, and he says, but he says I will pre, uh, agree to pray to Jesus um, with Senator Chuck Grassley, who was the family's representative there. He says, I'll agree to pray to Jesus. In return, I want my defense budget doubled. I want uh, meetings uh, for my defense ministers with top officials in the Reagan administration. Uh, and I want a hands-off American approach as I uh, deal with a little rebel problem in the North. Well, the family wrote back, and these letters are in their document for public review, uh, done, 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 and done, effectively. And when we go wow. look back in the history books, this isn't just rhetoric, because it was, and that was the beginning of the end for Somalia. So, no, that's not a support group. That's something entirely different. There is a family in, in Omaha, the Amason family, that um, has rather famously funded everything from uh, what is now ES&S, the voting machine company, to uh, newspapers and whatnot, um, who, who, some of whose members, uh, if news stories are to be believed or some, some reporting is to be believed, uh, are, have suggested or are members of a group uh, or a, a loose organization that has suggested that the Constitution should be replaced by the Bible. There's this whole Christian identity movement in the United States that is pushing for the Constitution to be replaced by the Bible. Is the family in that realm, in that world? They overlap with it. I mean, and you know, you find some, some very minor links to the Amundsen's, for instance, but not much. Um, I, I, one of the other arguments I want to make is I feel that liberals are often uh, – they're, they're not recognizing that there's both a populist fundamentalism. That's, that's these sort of uh, – both the guys we see on TV and these guys who want theocracy. And then there's an elite fundamentalism, and that's best represented by the family. And right. what elite fundamentalism it really is – it's a religion of the status quo. The family goes back for decades. One of the first legislative victories, and they can't claim uh, uh, can't claim it entirely as their own, but they put their muscle behind it, was something most Americans don't know about today called the Taft-Hartley Act. And if you want to know why... 1947, it's where it began the de deconstruction of our unions. Yep, it, and, and it was really, in some ways, the end of the New Deal. And it was vetoed by Harry Truman, and Congress overrode the veto because the Republicans took control of the House and Senate in the 46 elections. Exactly. Exactly. One of the most important pieces of legislation in American history. The and family was behind that? They, they were not exclusively behind it, but that was they began as a union-busting organization. In the 1930s, they went around to business executives and they said, look, unions are a direct affront to what they came to call biblical capitalism, this idea of free market fundamentalism. Whoa. So they didn't want to replace the Constitution. They didn't really care. They don't want a theocracy. They don't care about that either. They want uh, a, a sort of a, a a corporate government where you have a government... That's uh, called fascism, you know. I, I think there is a word for that. I well, mean, you know, corporate they, they, government is, is, the, is the definition. You know, exactly. the merging of corporate and state interests is the definition of fascism. I mean, like so many right-wing groups back in the beginning, um, they really flirted with fascism in the late 1930s. They were uh, included a lot of open admirers of fascism. We forget that you could say positive things about Hitler in, in Congress in the oh, late and, 30s. Oh, and many did. And many did. And those were you know, those were the guys the family recruited. After the war, they, uh, with support from the U.S. State Department, uh, went to uh, Germany. Abraham Baradi, the leader, uh, flew around on U.S. military planes, and he would go around to these former Nazi, uh, these war criminals, and say, look, if you're willing to switch out your loyalty from, you know, uh, the Fuhrer, from the, the father there, to uh, our father, to Jesus, um, then we're willing to take you on and, and whitewash Amazing. your record. Jeff, just, just, uh, just one minute left before we got to hit the break. What is the status of the family in terms of pol political power in the United States right now, and what can or should we do about it? Uh, they remain uh, strong and influential. They've been around for 70 years. They're not going to disappear with the Obama administration. Uh, I don't think he is terribly uh, friendly to them, but uh, there's no signs, uh, I think, yet that the Obama administration is taking on. Uh, Was Hillary Clinton a member of them? She is what they call a friend. She's a, sort of a, an associate. She calls Doug Coe, the leader of the group, a, a genuinely loving uh, and spiritual guy. She talks about in her, her memoir about having a, an all-women prayer cell uh, organized for her by the family. Um, she used them to sort of reach out to the right. I don't want to make too much of that. Um, but, uh, yeah, there is that connection, and that's what allows them to endure. And they're, but they're mostly aligned with the hard right Republicans. They are, yeah. It's always been about 80% Republican and then a few Democrats uh, 
uh, to, to give it a, a bipartisan veneer. Amazing. Jeff Charlotte, his book, The Family, The Secret Fundamentalism at the Heart of American po Power. Jeff, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Tom. And his website, of course, killingthebuddha.com. We'll have to have that conversation on another day. Great talking with you, Jeff.